Hey, hey, how you guys doing? Welcome to Friday. Hello, hello, good evening. Good evening, good evening. Welcome to Little Friday, man. Where with the amigo. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. I was never a, a big fan of Little Friday. El, el famoso jueves de amigo. I, I, you know, I never, like, I never understood where they got that from because it still feels kind of weird, you know, to go out on a Thursday. You still need to show up to work on Friday. So it's like, um, right, I don't know. It's not... it, it doesn't work out. <laughs> you know, I can't go and just eat one, you know, one little plate or, or drink you know, one beer. No, 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 no. That it's not gonna happen. Anymore. It's not no, no. So you can't no, do no, it. No. You can't do it. You have to, you know, you have to wait for that Friday. Right. All right. Mike, Miguel, how you doing, sir? Welcome. Edgar, welcome. Let's see over here. Felipe. Felipe, hey, hello, welcome. Teacher. Good evening. Hi teacher. Good evening. You? Good evening. Good evening, guys. Welcome to class. Welcome to our Friday. And it's actually our review Friday. We're going we're gonna to use it as a review. And so hopefully we're able to cover, you know, like in a review format. And see what we have on there. Let's see here. Wait a little bit longer. I, th I think we could wait till 9.05. And then I think we're good. How are you guys coming along with the platform? Yeah, very good. Very good. Okay. So the last, the next week is the last one, right? That's, that's correct. Next week yeah. we go into, next week actually turns into week number four for us. Yeah. And then, so we, we should complete everything there. So there's a few things that you guys should know that happens on week four. Uh, they start to review the platform. Mm -hmm. Actually, let me let me go ahead and share. I, I think we have enough. Students on board to begin. Yeah, it's 9.05 anyway, so let me go ahead and bring this up. All right, can you guys see my screen okay? Yeah. Okay. So what happens is that during during section five, which is next week, what they start doing is they start checking on the, the on the lessons and they start checking on who has completed the midterm, who is still missing the midterm and who is, you know, working on the final exam or if somebody completed the final exam, they also can see all that. And so what happens is you see here where it says the certificate. In order for you to earn a certificate, you must complete all the requirements. So that means that the midterm, the final, and the lesson plan has to be con uh, chequecitos, right? With little check marks. All right. And if you guys show that this has completion and as an overall, I think they ask for the minimum of maybe 80%. I think that's what I heard. I heard the administrator say that last time. So how do you know how you're doing? Well, in the progress, right? Progress report. And then, so from here, you can kind of, you can kind of guess, okay, I'm at 40%, but I'm going to complete the section five and I'm going to complete the final. So I should reach the 80. Now, if you guys have completed all of your works within the five, within the four weeks, what you guys are going to see is that some of you guys will start to see a blue button. Hay un botoncito azul where you are going to be able to see your certificate already and your certificate of completion. 
and then you can click on it and then you can print it out. Also, if in case you don't see the button, it doesn't mean that you didn't get certified. It just means that maybe there was something missing when they did the check, when they did the review. And so the option is not there. However, your certificate, you will receive it through the email or through WhatsApp. So we have three different, three different ways of you getting your certificate. Now, the certificate is important because in order for you guys to enroll to next module, you have to have that certificate. So, so keep that in mind. Also, during week number four, you do the enrollment for the next module. And so it's a busy, busy time for us. Um, we're checking the completion, we're checking the progress, we're checking the lessons, and we're ensuring that everybody's getting their certificates that has earned it, um, if you have completed the lessons. And also we're, you know, we're helping you guys in, in, in getting the certificate uh, Usually what happens is in the, in the groups, uh, we usually send the certificates or people say, I got my certificate and they'll show a little picture. And then somebody else will come along and say, well, I haven't received mine, you know? And then so in those cases, we start to investigate why you haven't received your certificate because in order for you to enroll to the next module, you need, you need to have that already. So, so, ojo con eso, ojo con eso, para que no se me vayan a quedar, ¿verdad? Okay, uh, what we wanted to do this time around, since it's Little Thursday, right, it's our Friday, we wanted to do a quick review of the sections, sections one through four, and so two types of reviews. Uh, this one is to ask you guys, how are you guys doing with the check marks? and have you completed section one so let's go section by section and you guys all you guys have to do is you know give me either the thumbs up um i think you guys can also put like a little hand or a clapping hand or or something on there if you guys don't want to if you guys don't want to you guys can also say yeah i'm done or it's complete so there's a there's a couple of ways of doing it let me see if i can do it from here i remember that it, it used to come up in the chat section. Let me see. I don't think I, I don't think I can do it while I'm presenting. Okay. But you guys, you guys are gonna be able to do it. All right. So let's start with section one. Is everybody okay with section one? Did everybody manage to complete section one? And that one is A okay and ready to go. Okay, I will also take your silence as a, I completed it. Yeah. Si te quedas callado, you, ya lo completaste. Section one, done. Section one, done. Okay. Next. Section number two. Check marks. Is everybody good with the check marks? Everybody set? Okay, I am taking that silence as a yes. Section two, done. Nice, thank you guys. Section one, section two, okay. Moving forward guys. Section three. How are we doing with section three? Oh my goodness, I, I, I have a bit. Let me see, this one is a video. Lesson objective, yeah. So I have a couple of videos on here that I have to complete with the knowledge check. Oh my goodness, and the costumes. Okay, so section three for me, I'm, I'm missing a couple of lessons and I'm missing a couple of knowledge checks. Anybody else? Remember, this week I'm gonna be working on these. So if you guys are working on section three and need and need uh, 
some ideas or need a little bit of help, let me know because I am also going to be working on section three. Okay, there were some here that I must have forgotten to click on. Or maybe the video, I think it's most, most of them are videos. Okay, section three for me, section three. For me, not done. Oh man, that's a little sad face there. Okay, section number four. How are we doing with section four? See that? Oh, that one's done. All right, attic section four, done. Good. Uh, so am I. I need a video for conversation and a knowledge check, and that's pretty much it. I'm done with section four. So that means that during the, maybe while I'm working on section three this weekend, I'm also gonna be finishing section four. If you guys need a work buddy for section three and four, please let me know. I'll be doing some of these here. I'll be doing the videos and I have a knowledge check on section four. All right. And then that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Oh, and I have the video. Are you in love? And then that should be it. All right, once again, section five is next week. You guys can see it has 13 lessons, but they're pretty short. And the biggest that we have on here is the final exam. Remember that the final exam takes questions from all of the lessons in every section. So some of them are gonna be really easy because they were from sections one and two, and then they get a little bit harder and a little bit harder, okay? Ojo con el final exam. Este también lo podemos hacer eh, en grupo durante la semana número cuatro. If you guys have anything that is pending, we can definitely do it there. All right? Okay. All right. So far, so good, guys. What we're going to try to cover today is in section four, we still had not seen some stuff which my, I'm planning on either finishing today or we finish it next week. Um, we have a little bit of intonation left over, so some pronunciation exercises. Uh, the conditional sentences with if is the one that I really want to tackle today, so hopefully we can get to that. And let me go ahead and show you here what we have. This, ladies and gents, is all the material that we have seen since we started. And if you can see, there is 68 slides. So the idea is to try to move through these slides as quickly as possible. And then that way I can, you know, that way we can try to cover the last, one of the last items on section number four. So quick review. Right, we're just gonna talk about things that we saw, and I'm gonna try to say I'm gonna be very brief on the slides. If you have any questions about any of the slides or the material that we had covered, please let me know, and then we can stop and take a little bit more time on it. Okay. All right. So we started the party with. Two-part verbs and phrasal verbs. Phrasal verbs, we did some examples, and the examples were to break and how they could be changed. For example, to break away, as in I have a group and I'm breaking away from my group. Break down as for example you have a car and the car broke down to break in as in someone broke into my house and stole my playstation 5 que mi clase me había regalado oh, oh, what what teacher what yeah uh, yeah yeah i wish i wish <laughs> Toda la clase va poniendo ahí, hey, para el teacher, hey, un, un cuchumbito, ponemos el cuchumbito y lo vamos echando. PlayStation 5 para el teacher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, we, were talking about, we were talking about to break out. 
which is another example, and we use to break out, uh, for example, from prison as an escape, right? Or a breakout like a, you know, like somebody getting sick uh, to appear or spread suddenly. Like, como el COVID-19, it just, it just broke out. Uh, it just went everywhere. And so there were some other examples that we used, for example, catching up or to catch up, uh, to blow up, break down, cut down, uh, to put up with, go out with, check up on, or to cut down on. We used some real life examples. Uh, from exa for example, uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Disraeli that said, damn your principles, stick to your party, right? We were talking about the two-part verbs. Uh, in this particular case, we focused on verbs, and these were the transitive and intransitive verbs. And we just kind of touched up on those to identify what they were. Some phrasal verbs are transitive. They can take on a direct object. And some phrasal verbs are intransitive. They do not take on a direct object. And so they give us the, you know, they give us the examples. Fill in the form as quickly as possible. Did you go over those reports last night? Right? Those did you go over? Okay. Did a little bit of practice. Actually, this one we don't need here, right? We started to talk about pronunciation. Yeah, baby, pronunciation. Let me go ahead and move this out of the way. There it is. Okay. Pronunciation. And we talked about the phrasal verb and what what does it do? Um, what, when to use it and how to use it? How to put the stress? So if you have a phrasal verb and that phrasal verb is describing an action, then the stress will be on the particle, right? Which is the second word. And so we talked about a little bit on pronunciation, on the stress, especially when it came to phrasal verbs. Right, and if you have the verbs versus the nouns, if you're using the verb, then the stress goes on the second part. Right? Fall apart, break down, break in, break through, go on, move over, give up. And if it's a noun, then you get those on the first portion. Get away, come back, break down, break in, break through. Look out, outlook, put on an income. In phrasal verbs, the particle gets the strong stress. So if you're using a particle, like set up, then the second gets the stress. Do over, leave out, give away, point out, turn down. Turn down for what? All right. We did a little bit of practice with those. And then we did some phrases like turn off and we practice them, right? How do we use turn off the lights? How do we say, get the takeout, you know, when we talk about food? How do we say hanging out, right? I just want to hang out with you guys and have a beer. Break up. Oh, somebody just broke up. Did some exercises with that. And then we began to look at models. So we focused on all of those that fall under that category. Words like can, would, may, might, should, ought to, must, have to, will, 
shall, and would. And these are all part of models that we use. We did a little bit of practice with those, right? We practiced a little bit with the basic rules, when to use them, how to use them, when to apply them. And then once we did that, we saw an overview of you guys using models for specific requests. Beth can dance very well, it's one of the examples. Can I use your car? Yes, you can, right? Whenever you ask, can I use your car? Yes, you can. Driving in heavy rain can cause an accident. And these are all examples of you guys being able to use can, which is a model, in different sentence types. Then we got to could. The roof could collapse if they don't do repairs. May. May I borrow your umbrella? Might. I might move to Vietnam next year. I might move to Vietnam next year. It could also be should. We could use should. You should revise the intro to your essay. El A2. After driving all day, you ought to be tired. Now, it sounds a little bit different if you spell it out, out to, or if you use it in a sentence, because most people say ada, ad, a. You ought to be tired. Must. You must be at the train station at 3 p.m. Have to. You have to come on time if you don't want to miss the bus. And then we finish it off with will, shall, and would. And the exercise is focused on would and could on the lesson. So, ojo con eso. We talked about infinitives and gerunds. You can use these, right? If you're using an infinitive, simple, the word to, to be, to arrive, to prepare. And then we talked about the gerunds which is adding the ing. So it's a verb and you add an ing and you get a jaron. We focused on these for some exercises. We talked about the infinitives. We practice infinitives. Remember just adding to, to wait, to swim, to write. Two is the infinitive. And then we discussed the gerunds and the rules. It is a gerund when it is the subject. It is a gerund when it is the direct object, the subject complement, the object complement, the object of a preposition, or the object of a possessive. In these particular cases, it is known as a gerund. And then we talk about how to put it together. We also covered the verb ing because if it is not doing these here, it is not recognized as a gerund. It is only recognized as a regular form of verb with ing. And it is used, for example, when you are saying, I am writing a book. If you ever see a sentence like that and somebody tells you that's a gerund, you tell them, well, not necessarily. In this particular case, it is just the verb plus the ing, the famous verbing. All right, and then once we got past that, we were talking about syllables, identifying the syllables. How do you identify syllables? What do you listen for? What is it that you need to listen to? What sounds? Vowels. The vowel sounds, there we go, there we go, right? So how many, the syllable is the sound of a vowel. 
So now whenever you guys are saying it, you guys have to listen to that syllable. And so then you have to focus on how many sounds you hear. For example, when you say present, right? Present, export, China or table. And so these were examples of two syllables. Uh, we discussed uh, one syllable, two syllable, and we also talked about more than two syllable stresses and the rules. We worked with some of these particular words. And then we never did this one, right? The syllables quick test. I'll tell you what, we can, we can do it now since we're doing the quick little review. And we can do just the one through five, right? Okay, the first thing I'm gonna ask you guys to do is identify how many sounds you hear or how many syllables you guys hear, okay? Yeah. All right, so the word that we're using is up here. And the word itself is plastic or plastic. Plastic or plastic. How many sounds do you guys hear? Two. Two. And that means that there are how many syllables? Two. Two. Right? So now we have to decide which one is the correct way of saying it. Is it plastic or is it plastic? First one. Plastic. 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 There we go. Plastic is correct. Yeah, you guys got it. All right. Here we go. We want to try this one. This one says photographer. Photographer. How many sounds do you guys hear? Photographer. Or. Or. There you go. Right? Right? So how many Four. syllables? <laughs> Four. Four. All right. Good. Photographer. So now this one. How do you say it? How do you say it? Do you say photographer or do you say photographer the second the second one second. photographer all right yeah photographer you got it photographer right photographer, photographer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. now when you say it real quick it sounds like there's an a on it so it sounds like you're saying photographer i don't know if you guys are i don't know if you guys have noticed that photographer at least photographer photographer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then so uh, as, as you start saying it a little bit faster and a little bit faster, it changes a little bit. All right, so now we have photograph or photograph. Pick one. Number one, photograph. Okay, photograph. How many syllables do you hear? Three. Three. That is correct. All right, photograph, okay. We go with number four. He was born in China or China? The first one. China. Number one. Number one, China. Okay, I, I like that. I like that. We're going to put. Keep it, keep it. <laughs> All right. Okay, and the last one. Whose computer is this? Or. Whose computer? Does it sound the same? Computer or computer? The first one? The first one? Yeah. Accept it. Yeah. Computer. All right. How many Three. syllables? Three. Three. Three syllables. Three different sounds. Computer. So now you guys can do that on your own whenever you guys see a word. Right. If you guys see a word, you try to recite it and try to go conversation. How many how many sounds did I have to do? Conversation. Right. And try to see how many sounds you hear. And then that will tell you how many syllables. And then based on the syllables, you can go ahead and do the stress. All right. So once we completed that, we talk about infinitives and imperatives. Imperatives are commands, right? All right, this is another word. An imperative is a command. Uh, stand up straight. Saca el pecho. La joroba, desaparece la joroba, te dicen. Give me the details. Open your book. 
These are examples of imperatives. And then we talk about infinitives because we use the to with the imperatives, right? And so you go back to actually having to use imperative with infinitives to be, to arrive, to prepare. And then you guys have to incorporate those here. And we get some examples. Uh, come here at once. Take that gum out of your mouth. Right. Take one pill every 12 hours. Open your books on page 33. Have some tea, still hot. Come in, sit down. We're having tea. Okay. These are some examples of imperatives being used in real conversation. Wake up, watch out. Don't touch me. <laughs> Don't eat too much. Go straight ahead, then turn left. Take the pill after a meal. Please don't go. Okay? So you have the functions and you have the example. To use a giving advice. To give a direct order or a command. To give instructions or a request. All right. Once we got past that, we talked about the syllable rules for words with more syllables than two, three, four, five, six, seven. And what we learned was that there's no specific rule for like a syllable. There are rules for words that end in specific letters. So for example, if a word ends with an IC, with a Sion or with a Shion, like in Revelation or television, then there's a rule for that. And then we went over all of these rules, right? Democracy, dependability, photography, geology. We talked about compound words. Two words being put together, where do I put the stress, right? Depending on what you're saying, if it's a noun on the first, if it's an adjective on the second, if it's a verb on the second. We did a quick review because there's other rules. For example, if the word ends with an ism, if the word ends with a sion, ism, sion, right? Like enthusiasm. And then we did vocabulary. You guys remember the vocabulary? Of course. How can you forget them? <laughs> we went over relative clauses. We did some exercises with relative clause. In this one here, we did the relative clause for using when. 1821 is the year when Napoleon Bonaparte died. 1821. I didn't know that. Relative clauses. And you could use who or that, which or that, whose, when, or where. And then we got into pronunciation. And actually, we did pronunciation a couple of times during the week. We talked about rhythm, intonation, and stress. The first one that we saw was rhythm, right? How do you say it? How can I sound it out? How can I look and, 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 and sound like I have that beat going on for me? The rhythm rule, you have content words and you have function words. Okay. You have the function words, I, A, on, and you have the content words, bot, car, Tuesday. And these get a little bit more of volume. I bought a car on Tuesday, and then we drop with the intonation. And so we did a few of these exercises, right? I took a bus to the park. I built a fire in the fireplace. Josh is reading a newspaper article. We went through a description of the content words versus the function words. 
we did a role play, right? That involved Principal, Helen, and Bernie. You guys remember that? That one was fun. I love that one. All right. Once we completed that, we went into pronunciation and we started to cover uh, intonation, right? The music, how it sounds. And with this one, we talked about falling intonation, rising intonation, and rising and falling intonation. We covered, we covered it up real quick because we had to move into adverbial clauses because, and as if, before, where, unless, so that. And these all had to do with time, place, condition, reason, manner, or purpose of an action. Okay. How are we doing so far? Do you guys remember this stuff? I think, yeah. okay. It was a lot, right? It, it, it's been a lot. And I know that it seems like maybe we haven't covered that much, but we actually have been covering a lot of information. So you guys should be proud. Right? You guys should be proud. Yeah. All right. We started to talk about the definition of a, the adverbial clauses. A group of words that function as an adverb and that can say subject and a verb. So they give us the example, right? Like the sun rises. That is an adverbial clause being used. When the sun rises, we will escape. And then we worked our way through those. We got to some adverbs of time and how to use them, right? I took a nap after I had lunch. And we use some words and we practice some vocabulary words with the time list. Tomorrow, tonight, now, then, before, later, still, previously, first, were some examples that we use. Indefinite frequency, for example, constantly, frequently, infrequently, and we touched up on the definite, daily, fortnightly, quarterly, monthly. Once we completed that, right, we started to talk about time contrast. This one, we, we finished that this week, talking about the past, present, and future, right? How do you want to sound and what do you want to say? Time contrast focuses on past, present, and future. And so we started talking about time contrast with the explanation of we have the now, which is known as the present, Anything going back is the past, and anything going forward is the future. Present, future, past. Now, you can go from present to past directly, but if there are interruptions along the way, this changes to a different tense that you would need to implement. And depending on which way you're moving also, there's another tense that you could use for those. Okay, and some of the examples that you guys can see are at the bottom, right? Present continuous is from the present, is actually from the present, moving backwards a little bit, and it's a moving action, right? It continues temporarily, and we have the present perfect, which is started at a time in the past, and it continues to move all the way to the present, right, in a little bit of so we have those examples here for present continuous and present perfect. We started to talk about time contrast and using sentences, past, present, and future. A few years ago, not many people lived in, you know, not many people lived here. These days, the population is growing so fast and soon there will be a lot of shopping malls. So examples of past, present, and future. We did some exercise and then we did some examples. We wrote them down for past tense, present tense, and future. All right, everybody good so far? So now we're, we're, we're coming to where we left off because the last pieces of information that we saw had to do with intonation. 
and the practices that we did, which was for rising intonation, falling intonation, and then the explanations of those. And with these, we were able to talk about how to make it sound with feeling. We were able to use them actually. We were also able to implement some reading and also use some of the different uh, strategies, uh, like the rising intonation, when is it used, and we also were able to practice the falling intonation, and we were also, you know, we were also able to, to use it. Okay, and we got here. So this one here focused on pronunciation. And it focused on words specifically. And I think this is where we left off, right? So after having covered all of that, it all kind of ends up or it winds down to this. How do you guys put all of that stuff together? And how do you put it into practice, right? Select the words. Once you have selected your words, you put together your sentence. Once you put together your sentence, you say it in your mind and, and you kind of listen, right? With that internal voice and see how it sounds. And so it starts off with, we went for a ride in the car. We went for a ride in the car. And then there's like a little beat to it, right? There's a, like, like a little beat to it, a little rhythm, ese flow del que estábamos hablando. We went for a ride in the car. Now, now, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but I want you guys to take notice of that because that's what we're working with. We went for a ride in the car and then you're going to drop it. So, besides the little beats that you guys have to do, right? Besides the little dot, big dot, little dot, big dot, now at the end, you're going to have to drop that volume with car. We went for a ride in the car and then we drop. I must get my hair cut. And then we drop it. So what's the easiest way to do it? Well, let me tell you, I found, I found the easiest way to do it. Check it out. Check this out. Right? So follow the letters and you see how they drop. We went for a ride in the, and then it drops in the car, right in the car. And so what did you do yesterday? Well, we went for a ride in the car and then it drops. I must get my hair cut. I must get my hair cut and it drops. What are you getting? Well, I must get my hair cut. Right? And then it drops a little bit. You must take them home. You must take them home. And then we drop. You must take them home. We will meet you at the station. We will meet you at the station. And then it drops. Falling intonation. Falling intonation, guys. So we put the beat, right? Little dot, big dot, little dot, big dot, little, 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 big, big, big dots. And then we drop the sound. And this, this, these are some of the examples that we have. I have some more here. I like your new dress, right? Hey, I like your new dress. And then it drops. I don't know if you guys have noticed in movies, in shows, series they usually they usually do that right i like your new dress and then it drops i like your new dress that's the best shop for shoes and then it drops that's the best shop for shoes and then we drop it okay who wants to give it a try who wants to try some of this drop dropping the base we went for a ride in the car, right? We went for a ride in the car. 
who wants to give it a go? Volunteers. Me. Yay. Me. Yay. Is that Gretel? Gretel. Gretel. Yeah. Claro que sí, Gretel. A ver, which one would you like to do? Do you want to try them all? You want to try all four and see how you sound? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Let's try it out. Let's try it out. All right. Uh, Gretel, let's start it off. Let's see. You can start off with the car and then move into hair and then station and then you finish it off with home. Okay. I mean, let's try it out. Let's see. Let's see how that sounds. Let's see how it comes out. First, we went for a ride in the car. All right. All right. There you go. It's dropping the bass. I like that. <laughs> I must get my hair cut. There we go. My hair cut. Okay. We will meet you. No, I thought I can. We will meet you at the station. There we go. There we go. You must take them home. There we go. There we go. That's it. Now, now at first it feels a little bit awkward, but it's only because we're put, we're putting extra emphasis on the words and everything that you're doing. But once you guys start to do it a little bit more often. Have you guys ever seen two, I want to say those gringos, two gringos talking to one another? And have you ever asked yourself, oh my God, they sound so good. They sound so nice. And y, y se están maltratando. Ellos están diciendo un montón de palabras y un montón de cosas, but they sound, everything that they say it sounds really nice, right? Um, as long as they don't use really bad words, It, the, the, the conversation is actually, you know, it's kind of like a little back and forth and you can see how people get really excited and they put that extra feeling. And, and I always told myself one day I want to sound like that. You know, I want to tell somebody, you know, when I, when I tell a story, I, I want that story to just, to just reflect, you know, every feeling that I have for that story. Do you guys ever feel that way or felt that way whenever you guys see these, you know, these conversations going on? So we need to let it go our emotions. You have to, well, yeah, because, because it, that's, that's what it's about, right? That is the whole idea of the English language is it's, it's how you say it that matters. So forget, I mean, the words are important. Don't get me wrong. Um, I mean, it, it's kind of weird if you're not going to use, a, you know, the correct word. You have to select the correct word. But besides that word, you also have to say it with that feeling. You know, if you say must, do you guys remember must? ¿Qué significa? What are we applying? What are, wait, what are we implying when we say must? It's an obligation. It's an obligation, right? O sea, now, you don't have to get a haircut. Bueno, creo que en la escuela sí va. They, they would make you cut your hair. Um, that is an obligation. Uh, pero en el trabajo creo que no. En el trabajo puede andar todo peludo y todo hecho leña. And then, you know, it's okay. If, if, if you're happy, hey, man, it, you're good so, with it. Somos them, no. <laughs> right, right. Uh, and then, no. so... So, I mean, you guys gotta, you guys gotta think of it that way. And so everything that you guys are saying, it, it's that emotion and that feeling. If you really feel strong about something, vos le tenés que poner el énfasis a qué es lo que vos querés que la otra persona eh, te entienda. Like, for example, when you guys use the word I, ¿verdad? I must get So even though here we're using the word must, no es la más importante de esta sentence. La más importante is get and hair. So if you guys think of it that way, right? Uh, usually the volume starts off with I, you know, I must get. And then ahí le pones el, I must get my hair cut. And then, so if you're having a conversation, if you feel really strongly about it, then you say, oh, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. I'm not going with you to the movies because I must get my haircut today. I must get my haircut today, right? It's so important. If I don't cut my hair, I'm going to get fired from work. 
And then so that becomes a top priority. And so that emotion has to be there. And the more we practice, you guys will see that we get a little bit more looser. La razón por la cual no lo ocupamos es que en español no hay tanta emoción. Se han fijado ustedes en eso. Don't get me wrong. Spanish is beautiful. Beautiful, right? Beautiful. So many words that you can choose from. It's fantastic. But there's really not that many emotions. I mean, you know, uy, ya pasaron al chucho. Ajá. ¿Qué le pasó? Sí, el carro. Le, lo, y explotó el chucho. Right? There's no emotion. We don't put any emotion to what we say. We just say it. However, in English, there is a lot of emotion, right? People really say, oh my God, oh, the car, oh, the car hit the dog, poor dog, oh my God. And then, and then, so you hear that emotion and that is pronunciation. And you guys have to pretty much let go and do it and you have to act it out. And sometimes, and sometimes we, we might hear ourselves and maybe we might see ourselves and we say to ourselves, Oh my God, I, I'm going to sound weird. But in reality, that's how, that's how English is. Yeah, they sound weird. They sound like they're singing. They sound like they have a beat. They sound like there's a rhythm. That's what it is. That's what it's all about. So, and remember, the more you do it, the better you get at it. Okay? Uh, Gretel, muchísimas gracias por eso. Uh, did anybody yes. else want to volunteer for the, the last two? Somebody else? Somebody else? Yeah. Maria? Mariana, Mariana, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go. A ver, a ver, the last two. I'll try. Let's do it. Let's try. Okay. I like your new dress. Ah, That's the best shop for shoes. There we go. You got it. You see how it, so, so, so you looking at it. Now, it, you didn't drop your volume. What happened with the way you said dress is you made it longer. And that right there is what we're looking for. So, so remember, there's three things you can do. You can increase the volume or decrease the volume. Okay. Or you can make the last word a little bit longer and hold that stretch a little bit tiny longer and that's it, that's all we need. I like your new dress and then it drops. That's the best job for shoes and then it drops. Well done, well done. Really okay. happy with that one. All right. So uh, let me see what, you know what? I don't think we're going to have time to go into conditional sentences um, because I have a couple of activities and we also have the live worksheet. So I'll tell you what, we can actually go into conditional sentences on Monday and we can finish off the section four. Well, I, I'm, at, at the beginning of Monday, we can finish everything off. And then we can focus on section five altogether. And hopefully by Thursday or Friday, we are going to be doing the final exam and we could do it, you know, together as a group. Uh, we can go one by one, you know, you know, we can try different stuff on it. All right, another thing that I wanted to do is, hey, you know what, we finished section four. Um, I wanted to give you guys a little time back. Um, I wanted to give you guys four minutes of your of this beautiful little Thursday, right? Or, I'm sorry, little Friday back. And I want to wish you guys a very good night and tell you thank you for your hard work and thank you for showing up to class. Excellent. Have a good night, everybody. Take thank your, you for take you your four minutes. minutes. Tomen los cuatro minutos. No se los van a gastar de un solo. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye. See you Monday. See you Monday. Good night. See you Monday, guys. See you Monday, guys. <laughs>